Hungry for more? Feast your eyes on liquid cooling galore! Hi, my name is Attila and welcome to another episode of the basics of liquid cooling. This time around, we'll be covering pumps, reservoirs and the awesome combo that you get when you combine them into one unit. It's a combo. There is quite a number of pump types on the market, but the majority of users choose between two of the most popular ones, the DDC and the legendary D5. Unfortunately for users like you, there are some copies of these pumps on the market, so you need to be aware of what you are buying. Some companies make slight changes to the pump design, while others just replace key components with lower quality parts and still call it a D5, which isn't cool. Meanwhile, we at EK Waterblocks offer our customers world-renowned, genuine xylem water pumps, so you don't have to worry about quality or the authenticity of our D5 or DDC pumps. But let's start with the basics and the key differences between these two pump types. Just get the D5! Hold your horses, we will! But first, let's talk about their differences. The D5 pump has a cylindrical housing and it's physically bigger than the square-shaped DDC. The D5 can offer higher flow rates at a lower head pressure, while the DDC has higher head pressure but lower flow rates. Head pressure is the pump's ability to overcome obstacles such as restrictive water blocks and it is usually determined by a simple test, hanging a hose vertically and measuring the height at which the liquid can be pumped. Also, it's important to know that the small DDC pumps can be a bit noisier than the D5 models. The DDC being more compact can also run a bit hotter and that's why additional pump heat sinks are available on the market. These heat sinks are not necessary, but it's something that can reduce wear and prolong the life of the pump. To make a pump actually work, you need a thing called a pump top, which channels the coolant and will allow the installation of fittings. The key design perk of the pump itself is its simplicity. The only moving part is a hemispherical impeller which is seated on a ultra-hard and wear-resistant ball-shaped ceramic bearing. The rotor itself contains a permanent magnet, which is driven by the electromagnetic coils placed inside the housing. It's a simple force interaction between the permanent magnet in the rotor and the electromagnetic stator, which is why these pumps can last for years but you have to treat them well so that they can last. Both pumps, the D5 and the DDC, are water lubricated. Therefore, it's strongly recommended not to run any of these pumps dry, even for a second. If you're building a small form factor PC with limited space, of course, the DDC would be a smarter choice. However, the absolute all-rounder is for sure the D5. Told you so! Yeah, yeah! It has high flow rates and it runs cool and silent. In most cases, one D5 can run for 5 years or even longer without breaking a sweat. But let's move on to reservoirs and talk about why they are even important. The only purpose of the reservoir is to feed coolant to the pump and to look nice, of course. While it's recommended to place the pump at the lowest part of the loop, the reservoir should always be placed right above it so it has a direct and unobstructed connection to the pump's inlet port. The reservoir plays a key role during the filling process to make sure that the pump doesn't run dry and doesn't get damaged. After that, it finishes its job, which means that the size of the reservoir has no performance impact whatsoever. It's only a convenience to have a big reservoir, so you don't have to top it off during the filling of the loop. The pump reservoir combo unit can be simply described as a fail-proof concept. Imagine it as a pump with a reservoir on top of it. This means that the coolant is always at the right spot above the pump, so you don't have to worry about running the pump dry, as long as you put coolant in it. Speaking of pumps, combo units are available with both D5 and DDC pumps. 
tubular or TBE reservoirs and combo units were the norm for a number of years, but lately the flat style or FLT products have become very popular. Most users choose the reservoir based on their shape and personal preferences, because there are no specific advantages to either. It's worth mentioning that both types are available in different sizes to fit different loop and case configurations. Easy maintenance and disassembly are the benefits of tubular combo units. Also, the acrylic tubes are easily replaceable if a smaller or bigger size is needed for the build. All this without the need of replacing the entire combo unit. Flat style combo units bring amazing aesthetic options and have multiple ports to ease the loop building. But once you get one, you are stuck with that size forever. If you want to take it even one step further, there are distro plates that make your life very easy. The distro plate acts as a reservoir, has a built-in pump just like a combo, and at the same time takes care of the distribution of the coolant, hence the name distro plates. Waterways, as some call them, are carefully and meticulously engineered, especially those sold by EK, so that the ports are in the right position to ensure ease of use. On top of that, distro plates are an exquisite aesthetic showpiece of any PC case. Now is the perfect moment to mention the EK Matrix 7, a new standard being introduced by EK. It will make custom loop liquid cooling much easier for everyone by making sure that products are perfectly aligned with each other. If you are interested in learning more, stay tuned for our upcoming videos where we will elaborate more on that. For now, it's unfortunately time to wrap up this video. If you have any questions, they are more than welcome in the comment section. And if you think that we have missed something or there is a particular subject that interests you, let us know. Stay safe and bye-bye.